Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group weekly update for the week ending August the 20th, 2021. So on a weekly basis, uh, you know, a down week, but uh, on a daily basis, pretty impressive uh, rallies uh, in, in large caps in both NASDAQ and S&P 500, uh, both yesterday, Thursday, August the 19th, 2021, and today, August the 20th, 2021. So uh, started off low, uh, it seems to have found a bottom. We'll see Monday for confirmation on that. On a weekly level, uh, these are just kind of blips and so kind of moving sideways. But uh, overall, as I've been discussing all this month of August, this is a normal August in many aspects because uh, trends that have been established since 2017 are continuing to play out in large part. There are a couple of anomalies, but what we do see here that, I, that I've been pointing out and try to continue to point out, canary in the coal mine is, uh, the, the canary's not, it's not passed out, but it is, it is choking, okay, it's, it's coughing at least, because when I look at the relative rotational graph of the different sectors in the economy, the only thing that is really leading right now are those same two sectors that got us through the pandemic to begin with, that's technology and healthcare. And so in many ways, although we're having a normal August, we're having an abnormal August and a large uh, uh, scheme and when viewed against the backdrop of the COVID-19 pandemic because of all these variants. And so we're getting now with uh, ICU beds uh, uh, completely full and many states around the country, they're shipping off uh, patients. It's really down, uh, coming down to us. I saw an ar article about a doctor in Dallas, Texas, uh, starting to assign ICU beds based on vaccination status. So that's where we're at. And so you, it's, it's impossible to not view what's happening in the markets against the COVID backdrop because it just continues to hang around until we get more people vaccinated and do away with this thing altogether as the economy continues to try to reopen and get people back into the office after summer ends here in just a couple of weeks. So that's where we're at. Uh, we're seeing we're seeing the NASDAQ in a weaker uptrend, but an uptrend nonetheless uh, uh, recovered. Uh, it looked pretty bleak midweek, but uh, it's recovered fairly well. The broad markets, the Russell 3000, uh, showing very bullish. But here's the, here's the thing that we're going to be looking at as we go through the weekend. All of these markets except all of these indexes, excuse me, except the S&P 500 have now banged up against resistance level or are soon to meet resistance level. Finally, finally uh, uh, this week uh, and in and, and the last two days, day and a half really, uh, we've got the small caps and the mid caps participating in a, in a bullish uh, rally, but they have their midpoints, their short term moving averages, 18, 20 day moving averages ahead of them that they have to pierce, so far as as does the NASDAQ. So far, the Russell 3000 has hit its uh, head on that, and as we are just into the early afternoons, so we've almost completed the day of trading, it is, uh, it is it, that's, that's where it's decided to rest at. The S&P is the only one that has pierced that 20-day, uh, 18-day moving average and moving up, has room to run uh, up to the top of its uh, expected trading range. The NASDAQ is just shy of that, but we're keeping an eye on these indexes and measuring all the other investments that we have underneath them to see where we're at. Our people are, are, are very well uh, protected uh, right now, uh, and we will see how this August closes out, moving into September, which is a fiscal year in, and um, it could be exciting indeed. So really? A roller coaster, okay. Uh, uh, loosely stated, volatility has been an issue. Spiked yesterday, but very quickly came back down. And so uh, the, the volatility trade uh, is is uh, is cheap right now. There is volatility here, but what we're really seeing is movements and reaction against the Fed's decision to begin tapering sooner rather than later. Uh, and, and what the market's going to view that as. And, and again, the bond markets, money's flowing right back into the bond market. So last week we closed out with a hopeful yield of 139, hopefully uh, going for it. This week we're back down into 124. And so probably close out the week there or lower. 
I uh, don't want to get into a lengthy discussion about the bond markets and tips, etc. I'll just close with saying that I'll leave you with this on the bonds. They are pricing in inflation down the road and shifting that off onto the federal government through the use of uh, uh, tips, treasury uh, inflation protected uh, uh, bond issues, but uh, securities is what the S stands for. But uh, um, that is still at a negative, okay? So really what you're seeing most of is foreign money coming in on the fear trade because of the global pandemic uh, not abating uh, anytime soon, not even abating here in the United States anytime soon among the unvaccinated. So we may get back to a place where we're using masks again and all that, but that's a separate discussion right now. I'll leave you with this as we close the week. Stay happy, healthy, and we stand ready to help you out. If this all looks really confusing and you're tired of riding the roller coaster, don't have to keep stay up at night worrying about what volatility is doing to you. We can manage the money. If you don't believe me, go ask any of our clients. We've got several of which are on our website, assetguidancegroup.com. And check out that website. You'll see testimonials from the various clients. I'll see you next time.